What is up, GOAT world? It is me, your boy JDZ, and I'm back at you again with another GOAT format video. Today, we got the top eight deck list from PWCQ number 51, and man, it was a blast. I know I say that all the time, but this one was special. So if you have time, make sure you go back and check out that entire VOD of that tournament. It was a phenomenal tournament from beginning to end. Some really cool decks showed up, and some really cool plays happened, so I hope you guys go back and check that out. But if you want to skip all that, I got the top eight decks from that tournament right here, and right now, we are going to go through it, but first, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to this channel like this video and make sure you're playing in gfc number 21 happening this weekend saturday and sunday okay 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 starting off with number eight 53 duelists in this tournament we're gonna start off with number eight number eight we have a evil for life evil for life representing team evil Evil for Life played the Chaos Turbo strategy a lot of times. Uh, this duel is going to show up with the Warrior deck. We like to put that to the side. Already qualified for the GOAT Format World Championship. Trying to get another invite here. Playing this Chaos Turbo deck. Very standard, very regular, very normal Chaos Turbo deck by all intents and purposes. If you look in the side deck, you got the one Creature Swap, one Scapegoat. That's a little bit different. One door, Dust Tornado, another Regeki Break. I think that maybe is something that you can do for the lockdown stuff. But again, very standard, very normal Chaos Turbo deck. Cool player. And thank you for coming by the booth and hanging out, Michael Gray, a.k.a. Evil for Life. Congratulations on your top eight finish. And maybe you can get a second invitation to the GOAT Format World Championship. Moving on to number seven. We have Dueling High. We have another duelist that's already qualified for the GOAT Format World Championship. Took a little step back, tried to get back onto some Chaos Turbo, but it said, you know what? I'm going back to the Warrior Bag. It's very similar deck to that what they've been playing all season. You got the 13 traps, but now you got the Magician of Faith in the main deck, still on two ta Kaiku, still on one Book of Moon. In the side deck, you got very similar ratios as well. You dropped it all the way down to one King Tiger, three uh, GK. K spies, two mine cons, one Saku, and one additional trap dust shoot is going to be in the side deck with one Amazon as Archer. So again, very standard warrior deck by all intents and purposes, but the duels is absolutely getting it in to have some great effects with warriors. I think it's a solid deck. So if you're thinking about playing GFC number 21 and you don't have a deck, maybe you can load the warrior strategy and have some good effects. But I think this deck is solid. Huge shout out to dueling high and continue to grind, man. This dude is an absolute grinder and I think he's going to get another invite very, very soon. All right, moving on to number six. Number six, we have Rick Sai. Uh, I believe Rick Sai is also Team Evil. So we got, I want to say, that's a lot of evil coming on in the top eight of this tournament. But Rick Sai is playing a really cool deck as well. This is like a Thunderclap Evolve deck. So you got the Zaborg in there, the one of Zaborg in there. But you're like, you know what? Zaborg needs a companion. So I'm going to put this Blowback Dragon beside the Zaborg. You have the GK Spies. You have the Zaborg. You have the Blowback Dragon. You have this nice Warrior Shell to put it in. It's like a Thunderclap plus a addition blowback dragon gun support you know i think that's a really cool technique and you got the brain control which goes great with blowback dragon too and especially if you're rick's on you got that that blowback dragon was popping off too that thing i don't think it missed i don't think his blowback dragon that thing had a 100 percent blowback effective rate and i think that just shows how good that card can be sometimes some my blowback don't don't do that but rick's off blowback was going crazy you got the minecon in the main deck which is great because you have the gk spies so that gives you more opportunities to get plus values with your mind control or at least have it pay for itself and not neg too often you got two trap dust shoots triple solemn judgment i think this deck is really really cool in the side deck i like to see that rigsaw has elected to go back to cliff the trap remover this is a card that i mentioned on the stream a few times i think probably should come back into the metagame because these lockdown burns these lockdown decks and these stall strategies are picking up steam and i think a rota for cliff play which a lot of warrior decks don't have anymore i think is necessary in these larger fields and in uh, these these tournaments because again gravity bonds level limits all these cards are coming back in droves so I like to see Rick Sauce ahead of that got the cliff in there you got Mobius still in there you have a magician of faith in there I think this deck is solid I see how Rick Saw can get to a sixth place finish and he's been absolutely cooking as well so huge shout out to Rick Saw and the blowback attack Zaborg thunderclap you know what I'm saying strategy is in full effect huge shout out to you all right moving on to fifth place we have the return of the return winner Hey, you see what I did there? Return winner took a huge break from Go Format and said, you know, I'm going to take a quick pause. Holidays happen. And that return winner is back at it again with another fifth place finish playing that nasty, nasty chain energy burn deck. You know, return winner is a frontline burn player. He's very good at it. And I'm glad to see that he's back in this tournament. Had a great tournament experience, a long run through this thing, playing his burn strategy. But if you look in that side deck, that's where the story is of this burn strategy. It's not just a 
in the typical burn deck, but in the side deck, there is a plan to transition this burn deck into more of an aggressive deck. You can still keep the attacking options. You could probably take some of your floodgates down and keep a little bit of the burn options and just aggress the hell out of your opponent because most of the times they're going to be adding in a lot of spell and trap removal stuff to get through your gravity bonds and your level limits. Well, now you got Berserk Gorilla coming over the top, absolutely haymaker in them. You got your Nobleman's coming back in, you got your Mind Cons and all this stuff. So it can be really cool. It's a nice little transition and a lot of people may not see it. The issue with these transition style decks is that in the online games, these replays are made so readily available that your opponent is going to know what you're going to be doing, but it still gives you a little bit of game within the game because you have to, they have to assume what you're going to do based on what you've done before. So you can kind of throw curveballs at them even more. So I think that's a really cool deck and return winner was absolutely cooking with it. I like to see the Berserk Gorilla being featured in this metagame. I think that card is too good with the Gigantes. Solid, solid deck. So going from burn to an aggro style deck with a little bit of burn burn on the side of it i think that's a cool strat and it can i can see how decks like this can push you into a, a top performance so well done for return winner and welcome back also go check out return winners youtube page especially if you are in the goat world if you're located in germany so he does a lot of stuff but it's going to be in german so make sure you go check out what return winner is doing and send him some love and support okay moving on to the top four we are in the top four now and we got jay harris who is climbing this duelist is climbing. He's getting there. Sooner or later, Jay Harris is going to win. I just know it's going to happen. Jay Harris, number 88, will win this tournament at some point because he's very consistent and he's getting top after top after top. But he just keeps getting all the way to the finish line, but not formally sealing the deal. He's close. He's close, but he's playing Chaos Turbo. Very standard. 10 and 10. No, he's got 10 and 11. 10 traps, 11 spells. He's cut one of the GK spies out for another spell card or maybe uh, additional Regeki break in there, which I don't hate either. I think Regeki break stock is going even higher through the roof. If it hasn't already exploded through the top of the roof, it's going to keep going up because like I stated before, these floodgates are coming in and there has to be an answer to, to that. When something happens in the meta, you have to figure out a way to answer it yourself and it's going to be in the form of regeki breaks for jay harris here so triple regeki breaks you got the one and one in the side deck the one meta one go in the side i think a uh, fresh irl did that last pwcq and i think it worked out for him so maybe jay harris saw that and said maybe i can try that myself maybe uh having some more room in your side deck. you got the dust tornado in there as well i like to see that so again very standard chaos turbo deck by all intents and purposes you know what i'm saying but it is what it is this is the deck of the meta this this, this is still the deck of the format and i do expect to see it heavily featured in gfc number 21 but I think people are starting to figure this thing out and allowing themselves a little leeway to play some different things because people are starting to counter the Chaos Turbo strat a little bit more. But huge shout out to Jay Harris for number four. I want to see you at number one very, very soon. Okay, but we got number three. We're in the top three. We have the uncrackable Carl Way, a.k.a. The Hulk has entered the building and he's playing a Chaos Turbo again. He's already got the, he's already got everything you would want. You know what I'm saying? He's already got the titles and accolades, but he's still trying to get more and more and more. Playing a Chaos Turbo very well. He did not, uh, he was not able to finish his tournament. He had to drop out due to some uh, obligations of life. So he probably could have got a win if he would have kept playing. He was on an absolute heater. The deck was moving around, getting all the things he needed and he was playing out of his mind. But unfortunately he had to drop from the tournament and made it all the way to third place in the process playing chaos turbo very carl chaos turbo this is basically the same ratio that he's been playing this whole time he's got the 9 and 11 11 spells nine traps two death shoot no solemn situation i think it's very solid and if the deck is if the deck is running and humping along like it was i can see that this duel is beating anyone i mean he's he's among the top tier uh, chaos turbo players so it is uh it is what it is but unfortunately he had to drop out like i said but huge shout out to carl waits ui's finest is in the building taking that third place i fully expect him to get another couple invites before this tournament before this uh, season is over as well so carl wait number three moving on to number two number two we have now this is the deck of the tournament this is the deck that i'm pretty sure everyone is going to be talking about this is the deck that everyone is going to tune in to see the ratio and what jace was doing this is the one this is the spice factory of the deck this is the craziest deck i've seen in years probably well i can't i can't say that because just last pwcq we had another crazy deck and now we got a no back at it again with another insane deck as jace is out here playing ritual relinquish lockdown burn i don't even know I, th I guess that's what you classify this deck relinquish lockdown burn i think that's what i can call this deck i think it is absolutely insane and it makes so much sense the more i look at it the more i see how much 
it can do. You know, you got exchange, which I think is a un underplayed card. I think you can get those damn ritual pieces to your hand, send those over to your opponent. And now you just got some value out of that. You see their hand and now you get to give them some garbage and you take one of their best cards. You can also in a pinch, give them a floodgate. Like I'll give up a level limit. I'll give up a gravity bind. It's not going to hurt me. It's only going to hurt you. And I'll take your best play. I think that's really cool. You got the freaking nightmare wheels, which was going crazy. You got the seven tools and the solemn judgment. Granted, you got the solemn judgment right next to the seven tools. That's a lot of cost that you have to pay but at the end of the day if your strategy is working you don't have to worry about it because you got relinquish on the field and he's sucking and he's sticking the card on the field and now they have to run the relinqu relinquish over they're taking some burn damage there but also they have to figure out a way to attack that thing twice and if you got stuff getting nightmare wheeled and you got these floodgates up it's going to be very difficult to do that also in the side deck this is where it gets even crazy i had no idea that this was even taking place and i watched this deck a few times throughout this tournament that there is a transition that is happening in this side deck so you're able to shift off of the lockdown burn and able to go back to a more standard chaos turbo ritual deck which is a very good deck in itself you know what i'm saying and you got these ritual monsters you might not have the discard trust but you're able to pay for the magic jammer with the with the pieces that you get from your deck um you think that is really i think that's really cool but in the main deck i would say that you need sinister Ser i think sinister serpent has to find a way into the main deck i think it's, it fits the mold very well of what you're trying to do and maybe even a morphing jar cyber jar kind of thing can fit the mode of what you're trying to do in that main deck but still i think jace has been has, has knocked it out of the park on this one i think this is a cool deck i think it's very solid and it just lets people know that if you have a plan and you put it together you can make it work and go for map. If you're creative enough and you can think outside the box enough, you can do something different and be unique and have your own thing and go for map still. And I think a deck like this is highly indicative of that and I think it's really nice. But a huge shout out to Jace from Down Under. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, I want to see I want to see what you got next, man. This is cool. This is cool. It's going to be hard to top this one. It's going to be hard to top this one. But going on to number one. Number one in first place. Forget everything I said about Jace, okay? Forget, forget all that. We got Don't Count Me in the building. And he's brought it back. He did it. He finally did it. He finally did it. Folks, don't adjust your screens. What, you, what you're seeing on your screen right now is a Chaos Control deck that Don't Copy has managed to win a tournament with, okay? In the year of our Lord, 2024, the first win of 2024, the first win of the new year is Chaos Control, baby. We are back. Mortimer, we're back. Chaos Control is back and we're on top. I love to see it. I love to see it. I love to see it, man. This is my favorite deck. I've tried this deck. I've tried this deck several times and it's good. It's a really, really good GOAT format deck. It does everything that you want Chaos Control to do and don't copy. Knocked it out of the park on this one. Huge shout out to Don't Copy, but also huge shout out to Geist D because in the GOAT format World Championship, he did play a deck very similar to this one. He kind of refined these ratios and realized like, hey, Chaos Control, the reason why it sucks so bad the reason why it breaks so much because we're playing too many damn monsters so we really streamlined the amount of monsters down to the lowest possible amount that you can have and then you upped uh some of the spells and made it a little bit more consistent you got the uh the solemn judgments in there i think this deck is solid you're able to play creature swap you're able to play triple metamorphosis triple scapegoats boom and don't copy did it the hard way okay he did it he went the long way around this duelist went down into the loser's bracket round number one okay double elimination is it is what it is. It sucks. Everyone knows no one really likes double elimination because it might as well be single elimination because once you go down in the first round, your tournament is basically over because winning 11 games, 12 games is very difficult to do in GOAT format. Well, don't copy did that. He went all the way. He went to the round one loss and then went the iron route all the way through Dogtown through the finals. And I think that is indicative of this deck. And also this duelist ability and just being able to be laser focused like that for that amount of time, I think is truly incredible and says a lot about Don't Copy's dueling prowess. Okay. As of recording of the video, Don't Copy is now the number one rated GOAT format player. So keep that in mind and give him some huge congratulations, and agil some adulations and congratulations to Don't Copy because I don't think that duelist gets enough roses. He is absolutely a fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh player. In the side deck, you got the one of Karibo. You got the card destruction in there. You got double Raigeki break and dust tornado so the matchup that he had to play against Jace was probably the worst matchup Jace could have ever imagined to have because that Jace 
the, the lockdown deck is really good against the turbo stuff because they don't have the amount of floodgate answers where don't copy has all of that. He's got triple regeki break dope. He got triple regeki break dust tornado. He's got the metamorphosis to get the, um, to get the nightmare will stuff off. And it's just, it's just, it is what it is. And he got this assured priest in there. That assured priest was absolutely punching the clock in that finals. So go back and check that out. Like I said before, but again, huge shout out to don't copy huge shout out to the worst generation bones organization and huge shout out to all of you for watching this video, man. I'm so excited about the 2024 season. I am so excited about GFC. I just want to see what these players are going to be doing and what is going to get cooked up next. So I hope to see you all out there at GFC. But as always, I'm JDZ. I play Ghost until the next time. Shout out to all the real ones. Salute to the OGs. Peace.